Music off. <laughs> Hi, folks. Today we're going to discuss the second part of the Japanese general, General Tamagami's essay in reference to Pearl Harbor. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank all the good people in Japan who sent me the English translation to that essay. Thank you. It's very helpful. A very well written document. I'm going to address the Pearl Harbor aspect of it. All right, folks. Now. Whenever we examine history, it's best to look at it from a perspective at the time the events took place, such as this time we sh should look at it from a 1941 perspective. So let's put on our 1941 hats, our fedoras. Yay! <laughs> That's it, kids. We're now in 1941. All right, enough of that. Anyway, taking place in Europe at the time were the Nazis squishing one country after another. And the last democracy holding out basically was the United Kingdom holding on by a little bitty thread. Yeah, a little bitty one. Well, Roosevelt knew, President Roosevelt, that if the United Kingdom fell, the next place the Nazis would go to would be the Western Hemisphere, Canada and the United States. And he did not want a European war devastating the Western Hemisphere the United States and Canada. He knew it would be best to fight the Nazis right there in Europe to keep the mess over there. So he had to keep the United Kingdom afloat so we have a staging area into Europe and also because the British were our allies, our compatriots, our goombas, eh? <laughs> but he was looking for an incident to get us involved and Hitler almost helped them out there. Hitler said you send any merchant ships to the United Kingdom, we're going to sink those ships because you're entering a war zone. So we said, are you shipping me? <laughs> no, no, no. I got that off of a commercial. So we sent some ships to the United Kingdom and Hitler sunk them just like he said he would. But the American people did not get upset over that because the American people knew that Hitler warned us and that we were entering a war zone and we suffered the consequences. The American people told Roosevelt, you shut your face, you keep us out of Europe, we don't want to get involved in any war in Europe, we don't want to get involved in any mess in Asia. That's their problem, not ours. So now we go to Asia and the Japanese have an enormous industry going in their nation which needed tons of resources and they were getting that from the United States. Well then the United States Congress says hey hey hold on here. The Japanese are occupying part of China and the nationalist Chinese and Chiang Kai-shek are our allies. So at that time we used to stand behind our allies. I hope we do that today. But anyway, <laughs> anyway so the United States placed an embargo on any resources going to Japan say Finny, no more, till you, go, till you get off the lands that you occupied from 1937 forward, you're not getting any resources. So the Japanese says, buddy, you stupid, we succumb to one ultimatum, you'll give us a second one, a third one, and a fourth one. You see, here's what happened. Roosevelt wanted an incident, he couldn't get it from the Nazis, so he figured since his resource situation it was, he could get an incident from the Japanese. Let's put that aside. Another part of the uh, general's essay is, he said that Roosevelt was not appreciative of the horrors of communism. I have to disagree with the general in that respect. Roosevelt knew of the horrors of communism. The communists knew of the horrors of communism. When we finally did enter the Second World War, the American people were horrified that we were now allies with a thug, a bum, and a murderer such as Joseph Stalin. So Hollywood produced a few movies to uh, bring up sympathies for the Russian people being oppressed by the Nazi thugs. Also, the news media happily obliged by labeling Joseph Stalin, the bum, thug, the commie, as Uncle Joe. Yeah. What American did not have an Uncle Joe 
sitting at their dinner table on a Sunday afternoon. By calling him, calling him Uncle Joe, he became la familia, part of the family. Shoo! <laughs> So that see, so Roosevelt knew the evils of communism as well as the American people did. Another illustration of that is Roosevelt had communist sympathizers in his administration. They kept those sympathies to themselves because had they revealed their communist sympathies, Roosevelt would have dismissed them. He also had communist spies in his administration, and for obvious reasons they kept that a secret. So Roosevelt knew of the evils of communism. Now back to that trap again. I'm willing to concede, in conclusion, I'm willing to concede that Roosevelt was hoping for an incident from Japan, but I don't know so much if he set a trap or he contributed to events that may have led to such an incident. And that incident, I don't think he bargained for it to the magnitude that was Pearl Harbor. Maybe sinking of a ship or two, but a whole fleet? <laughs> so, I think he got more than he bargained for. So, I don't know if I can agree with the general about that trap situation. Because had it been a trap, let's just say for argument's sake the general's correct. Did you have to walk into that trap? You weren't blind. So folks, let's not shut down the debate or the discussion or the argument. It's healthy to discuss these things in a rational manner. Let's leave out the emotion, leave out the anger, and let's discuss it like rational, like rational folks so I could get back to listening to my Italiano music. <laughs> All right, folks. We'll see you. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the nation you happen to be in. <laughs> see you, folks. We are springing to the fall for 300,000 more.